Life is governed by laws. Laws can also be called principles. The Bible is a book of laws. In Joshua 1 8, it said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there in what? Day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way what? And thou shalt have good success. The Bible is a book of laws. Your success is determined by how you obey and apply the principles of God's word. Now, you understand, you are people of God. Until your assignment becomes a necessity to you, you may not make the most out of it. People expect the rewards without working. Nothing will ever work until you work it. First Corinthians chapter 9, for time's sake, we may not read all. 16 to 27. Paul speaking said, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid up upon me. Yea, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. That was for the gospel, is for every principle. He said, Necessity is laid. I bring myself to the point of commitment. If I don't do this, now listen carefully. Paul did not make impact because it was Paul. Jesus had 12 of them. The Messiah, the greatest coach of all coaches. When he left, we never heard of Matthew, Bartholomew again. They were lost. We keep hearing Peter, James, and John. They were not the only ones. Others were lost. And then a man came on the scene. Who didn't meet Jesus? Paul. And Paul, by the law of commitment, this man became the most influential after Jesus. You cannot preach today after Jesus Christ. The next name you call is Paul. He gave himself to the law of commitment. He committed himself to the calling even more than Peter. Even more than who? Peter that was with Jesus wrote only 1 Peter, 2 Peter. Paul wrote almost 50% of the New Testament. Commitment will distinguish you. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So I hear. You may not be too talented, but if you are committed, you will beat those who are talented. said, who is me if I preach not what? He brought himself into a law of necessity. He said, look, listen. He said, I bring my body into subjection. I'm going to give to the demands of commitment. Paul took his world by storm. You take your world by storm. <laughs> Paul lived in such a way that he made the best out of his calling. May you make the best out of whatever God has given to you. People are in lack because they lack the spirit of commitment. Lack the spirit of what? Many are waiting for things to happen without them doing anything. Nothing will happen until you make it happen. Nothing what? <laughs> what I'm talking about, First Corinthians 9. Look at that. 16 to... Now, but... Let me read verse 24 to 27 for time's sake. The message translation. Message. I want the message. It said, look at it. Everyone look at it. It said, you have all been to the stadium and seen the atlas place. Everyone runs. One wins. Run to win. Everyone what? They say, only a Only the committed wins. All good atlas train hard. They do it for gold medal, that tiny shield and face. You are after one that gold eternally. I don't know about you, but I am running hard to the finish line. I am giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. That's listeners. No listeners, what? I'm staying a lot and in top condition. I'm not going to cut napping, telling everyone else all about it and then missing out myself. So God forbid. Every 
committed man is creative. And every creative man is productive. And every productive man is successful. It is those who are committed to the assignment that will be distinguished. May you be distinguished. If you are not committed to the assignment, you will commit crime. So I will be committed to the work at hand. Let me say this to all of us. We must not be part of the consumer's generation. Expecting everything of life to come to us free. Paul said, I give myself. I give what? To the law of necessity. I don't want to. Now listen. Next Sunday, I'm preaching a message that if you miss that message, <laughs> it's a message that anybody that follows the eight steps I'm preaching next Sunday in any area of life, including habit, you come out from one to the other. Failure to success, from sin to righteousness. I guess it's the same principle. I have about 28 books to read for next Sunday service. He said, do I read them? I paid millions to know how to read fast. I can't talk that one now. Are you going to have seen now? He said, to the eight books, I said, going to read. I've done it before, so it's not new. I can't tell you that one. That is not today. I paid money. Don't ever say money. Uh, knowledge is expensive. <laughs> Hello. Pay any price for knowledge. Oh. Pay any price for what? An Australian businessman who was a bricklayer. He's a multi-billionaire. Was a bricklayer. And Mark Mudok went for his conference in a place where he was talking. And while he was talking, Two of his tapes and one small book was sold for $750. And he asked his associate, a small young man, to go and buy the book. The man came back and said, sir, it's very expensive. He looked at him. What did he say? He said, sir, how can you buy two tapes with one small book, $750? It's expensive. He said, I said, go and buy it. The man came back again and said, sir, you can buy more materials without money than this one. He said, that's the one I want. For a man who was a bricklayer to be a billionaire, that's something he must know that I need to learn. He was a bricklayer. He's a multi-billionaire. So if that man says something, let me hear what he said that made him from a bricklayer to be a, as a child of God. You know, from first, if you say, how can I buy my this book? Very expensive. That smart book will be 20 pages, nine and one sell for $1,000 for what? That's why you are where you are. People who love knowledge don't ever say it's expensive. I have bought four CDs. I've shared it before for some hundreds of pounds. I went for a conference in London. Four CDs. And I bought it for hundreds, not 100, not 200. Hundreds of pounds. Because it is in the CD. They are worth more than that. And I wanted to have knowledge of them. The wig you're wearing, how much is it? They show you are as a man. How much is it? If you think knowledge is expensive, remain ignorant. So I hear. Businessmen and women who are not committed to their business can't succeed. And what? Let me say this to you. Every one of us must accept responsibility. Must accept what? To be committed workers. Otherwise, such person will end up as liability to society. You can't succeed in any assignment you are not committed to. Free money is dangerous. Free money is what? It's dangerous. You know why? Proverbs 30 verse 11 says, Wealth gotten by vanity shall diminish. But it that gathered by labor shall increase. Free money cheapens destiny. Whatever you are doing, will never be different until you are committed to it. Give your assignment all it takes. And if you don't want, if you don't want to live like a man in an asylum, pursue that giving tax with a sense of responsibility. Yet these people have got every leader in all fields of endeavor. They display this law of commitment. Every leader. If you see a leader in sports, is committed to, to it. If you see a leader, leadership is not position, oh please. 
Wearing big title without result is heavy load on your head. Listen. When I say every leader, I don't think it's a head of state. Every leader, today we have a leader in the IT industry. We have a leader in logistics, the founder of Amazon. We have leaders in computer. We have leaders in science. We have leaders in the academics world. We have leaders in personal work. Every leader in any field, there's a bit this quality. They display it. Are you going to say now? They are committed. Okay, tell me, do you know Ronaldo is getting old now? Go back to when he was in his 30s. He does press up a day hundreds. No, no, age is catching up on him. No, no, most of his men have retired. Most of his men are what? Round the 37, go to 38. Hope you know. Is still playing. Is still what? There's no leader who does not display this quality. That they are committed. They are what? Committed. It can't be a leader wishing. All in the business world. When I was reading about El Mox, he goes to work and does not leave office. Now, I want to be like him, you know. <laughs> the com- Are you pursuing money or you're pursuing commitment? In every field, everyone, every field, you can't be a leader if you're not committed to your assignment. Except you want to commit crime. Let me say this to you. Prayer and fasting <laughs> is no substitute to commitment. They only give you supernatural backing, but you must walk. I refuse to be idle. to say that. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. In John chapter 5 verse 17, and Jesus answered them, my father walked hither to, and I walk. <laughs> Who is speaking? Who is speaking? The one that can command bread from heaven said, hey, if my father walks so, who is he talking about? Do you know in previous services, first and second, I said, God planted a garden. He did not say, let there be a garden. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. He planted garden. He did not, he did, the Lord planted what? Garden, verse 8, sorry. I think it's verse 8. The Lord planted garden. It's what? God planted garden. God planted what? God Almighty did not say, let there be garden of Eden. He planted it. That means he walked. So here. And he said, Adam, walk. These days we don't want to walk. We want cheap money. Want what? That cheap is destiny. And Jesus came. The Messiah in John 9 verse 4. He said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me. I must, it is optional. He said, I must walk. In case you don't know, this is my duty. May you walk. Amen. Tell your neighbor, walk, oh, walk. <laughs> Going to walk is not walk. It is productive result that is walk. You can go to office and not walk. Hope you know. I don't mean get up in the morning, go and sit in the office, be reading newspaper. Second Thessalonians 3.10. There are young men who are not walking home. Let me see. Read this together. I want to go. For even when we are with you, 10 and 11, read together. I want to go. For even when we are with you, this we command you, that if any would not let it, neither shall it what? For verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all, but are busy. Chant and chant. People who don't walk, they talk too much. Check anybody not walking. They talk too much. I'm going to tell you what they have for church. They have nothing. They bring two heads. They know everything in the church. But they are not doing anything. So what person? That sister is a witch. Not tell anybody. Else. You are not doing anything. So everybody that passes in the church, you see. Thief. <laughs> if you're working, when do you have time for somebody else? Busy bo- Check everybody who is a busy body. They are idle. Can you go to office and, and think of work? And by the time you come back, you're exhausted. You just prepare food and go to bed. Why are you are doing nothing? So everybody you see, I want to tell you, you know, Papa, the way they talk. You know, see, in head, don't they shine? (laughs) 
They set a hair, no, they get up. You know why they talk like that? Plain, plain, plain. You are doing. Now they can see the set of my head. If you are busy, don't mind your own head. Hmm? Okay, they shine. What are you going to do now? Without cream, they shine. If I rub cream, that means I will allow. <laughs> if they shine, you know, not lie. Hey, if I wear a wig, wouldn't you be confused in the church? <laughs> Just imagine me wear a wig. You come to church and say, ah, is it Papa or somebody else? <laughs> Let me say this to you. Stop building your life on other people's income. There's nothing anyone can give to you that will make you successful. It is time to effect change in your life. And change is initiated. You don't wait for change. You initiate change. That's how we initiate change. Say it one more time. Let me say this to all of us. Refuse the slavery mentality of being forced or coerced to work. With slavery mentality, you don't accept responsibility. With slavery mentality, you don't love to work. The first sign of a man or woman who has slavery mentality, they don't love to work. But you have to change to improve. You have to what? You can't continue with your old lifestyle and expect new things to happen. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 10, 5 to 7, 10, 15 to 18. You all know the story. He said, there's an evil which I've seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. He said, fully is set in great dignity and the rich sit in no places. I have seen servants upon horses and priests walking upon servants. I said, God forbid. The labor of the foolish we let every one of them because they don't know how to go into the city. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child and the princes eat in the morning. Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles and the princes eat in the due season for the strength and not for drunkenness. He said, but by much laziness. By what, what? By much laziness, the building decay. That's the meaning. And through idleness of the hands, laziness, the house drop it through. So I hear. So I'll improve my skill. Now let me say this to you. We are in the age of knowledge and technology. Hope you know. So you have to tax your brain to make gain. Stop sitting down and spend money to fall from heaven. Remember, skill is not a gift. Skill is not a what? Skill cannot be fasted for. Skill cannot be transferred by laying on of the hands. Skill is not acquired by birth. Skill is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. Skill is consciously learned. Lack of skill can kill any dream and can frustrate any effort. Skill is the force behind excellence. Every destiny is at the mercy of skill. Skill is the security of every dream. Stop wishing a change, start working at it. One. If you want something to change for better, you affect the change. So here. Time changes nothing. Every change is consciously worked out by those who desire it. You pay the price of what you want. And let me say this to you, nothing of value is free. Nothing of value is what? You cannot possess expertise without commanding attention. So, pay the price. Pay what? Skill can only be learned. Take time to pay the price. This is the era where we must accept to change. That's not the end of our liabilities. So I need personal development and improvement on my assignment. So you have to personally what? Improve. Because any success not updated will be obsolete. Tax your mind. Bearing big title without commitment is failure without knowing. So develop your mind. Develop your what? Develop your mind. Sit down and 
acquire knowledge. The world is going for knowledge and technology. The richest people are no longer in oil and gas. The richest people are now in the technology world. Technology has taken over. And technology has to do with what? Brain. It has to do with what? Brain. Saudi Arabians are not the richest people in the world. I hope you know. The first 10 richest men know Saudi Arabian. These days we don't want to walk. We just sit down. I know they will give me money. My brother will be commissioner for national movement. You know, if you help yourself, this is my brother. You know, are you handicapped? So, of you will sit in Africa and be saying, Sick at my sister. Since she went to America, she can't even send us money. What are you? Do you know how they work there? Some of them do three, four jobs to, make, to pay their bills. You stay here. They can't even send someone money since they went abroad. You can't you from here send them money? If you walk here too, there's money here now. Where is it written? That shall send me money from overseas. Is it your Bible? That shall collect only from abroad. <laughs> Please sit up and walk. We are, we are in a generation where people are becoming too lazy. Too what? Lazy. Expecting things to draw from heaven. You know why you walk? When you walk to earn money, you will learn to spend money. If you don't work, money will mean nothing to you. When they give you, say, this small money, this small money. But when you work to earn it, every money you value. I don't waste money. I, I calculate my money because I know how I work for it. But just don't work. Give, have you ever been rich and give your brother who is not working? You get any money, say, that my brother, very stingy. Very stingy. Hey, since they made him commissioner, I cannot even find somebody small money. You, you, can't you find your brother some money? Many young people are lazy, 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 expecting money to drop from. Let me tell our young sisters, no money any man will give you will make you. Are you hearing me? Even your husband's money can make you. You have to work out. Because if you don't work and they give you, you will waste it. A wise man said, give all the money equally that has been in the world. Share it to the pocket of those. Who are in the world. That's, take the whole money in the world and share it equally to all of us. In one year, it will go back to the pockets of those who have developed themselves. Let, let me close with that. Last he said, take the whole money in the world, share it equally to all of us. In one year, the entire money will go back to the pocket of those who have developed themselves. So what brings money is not people giving you money. What brings money is you developing yourself to walk.